Congratulations, true crime addicts. We've survived another week. It is Friday, May 17th, 2024. Uh, this week, David Copperfield can't make 16 alleged victims disappear. Abducted boy found alive after 27 years. And DJ Academics has been hit with a lawsuit of epic proportions. All this and more. Stay tuned. Yes, super excited. We are all pumped to have James Author Renner. James Renner. On. That James Renner has zeroed in. James on. Renner's once again drops a bombshell. Investigative James journalist Renner. reporter James Renner. James Renner, who's been James on the podcast Renner. a long time. Local writer, James Renner. James Renner. And we're back with True Crime This Week with me, your host, James Renner. Oh, oh, I almost lost the James Renner bell. Hey, uh, if you like this show, if you like getting updates on true crime stories that you might have missed during the week, if you like hearing about true crime before any of your friends, um, that's too bad because I'd like you to tell your friends about this show. Uh, if you like the show, tell somebody about it or leave me a nice little review. Give me some stars. Uh, take, you know, 30 seconds and boom, boom, you're done. And, uh, you know, it helps everybody out. It boosts the show. Uh, it makes you feel happy. You get a little dopamine release in your brain. Trust me, you're going to enjoy it. So, yes, please, leave a review. Tell somebody about the show. Let's make this sucker bigger, huh? Uh, and that's what she said. <laughs> um, anyways, I want to thank, <laughs> as always, I want to thank Walter for manning the camera. Uh, Walter's just back from giving the commencement ceremony at Benedictine College this week. How'd that go, Walter? Uh, pretty good? Okay, thumbs up. Um, by the way, Walter uh, made a cameo on my TikTok this week. If, you, if you're into the TikTok, uh, follow me. I'm at the James Renner. Uh, that's my handle on TikTok. And, uh, you know, Walter shows up. So it's, it's kind of fun. Let's get to the top stories. This week is kind of bonkers. Uh, and a lot of things have happened just in the last couple days that you might not know about, especially this top story. You may recall back in January, you know, I'm a bit of a prognosticator when it comes to true crime. I've been doing this so long, I can kind of sense where some of these stories are going and when they're going to drop. And this one I got spot on. I didn't exactly think it was going to happen this quickly, though, but here we go. You may recall back in January uh, when the courts released the name of some of those men who had visited Jeffrey Epstein at his apartment in New York City. It was revealed in those documents that Epstein was a very good friend of a magician named by uh, David Copperfield. You'll know Copperfield, right? In that episode, I talked about a friend of mine who had had uh, kind of several run-ins with Copperfield, and he actually lost two girlfriends to this dude because he'd take these girls to the show, and then Copperfield would have his assistants uh, find these attractive women and invite them back to his apartment afterwards. And then things uh, got a little out of control. So uh, I knew this, I, I've known for years that this guy was kind of skeezy. So I'm not surprised that this story is breaking. Here's what happened. This week, on Wednesday, The Guardian published an expose on David Copperfield revealing 16 women who have accused the magician of sexual misconduct and inappropriate behavior. And unlike the Statue of, Statue of Liberty, uh, Copperfield is not going to make all of this vanish into thin air. How do you like that transition? Um, one story involves a girl identified as Carla in the article who says Copperfield gave her his phone number in 1991 when she was just 15 years old. Carla claimed she was groomed by Copperfield for two years and that he sent her a teddy bear on Valentine's Day when she turned 16, along with a note that said, quote, in two years, I will be back, end quote. He did, however, wait until she was 18 to have sex with her, uh, although he tried to get her to perform oral sex on him when she was 17. Another young woman claims Copperfield groped her breasts on stage during a magic trick in front of her father and sister who watched aghast from the front row. She was a high school freshman at the time. The allegations against Copperfield span four decades from the 1980s to 2014, and more than half of these women say they were under the age of 18 at the time of the alleged incidents. Lawyers for Copperfield refute the claims and say he has done nothing wrong. And then they threw a smoke bomb on the ground and disappeared. 
Copperfield was the youngest performer ever to be accepted into the Society of American Magicians, and his net worth is estimated close to a billion dollars. He currently performs around 500 shows a year at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. The first public report of inappropriate behavior against Copperfield came in 2007 when a woman named Lacey Carroll alleged that Copperfield raped her on his private island, which triggered a two-year investigation by the FBI that was dropped in 2009. Another woman, Brittany Lewis, has alleged that Copperfield drugged and sexually assaulted her in 1998. Reporters spoke to a woman identified as Olivia, who claims Copperfield brought her on stage and put his hand between her legs when she was just 17. Now, this article, like I said, dropped on Wednesday, but I imagine this is only the first of many articles you're going to see like this as more women come forward now that people have started talking. It should also be noted that Copperfield has not yet been charged with a crime. But uh, in the meantime, go read that full article at, at The Guardian. The link is in the liner notes to this podcast. This next story is incredibly creepy for many reasons and will likely give me nightmares, nightmares for a, a couple weeks. Um, and I'm sharing it with you because it's... it's uh, well, it's, it's, I can't not share it. It's, it's a wild story. It, you know, it reminds me of the, the women in Cleveland, the miracle in Cleveland um, many years ago. A little background first. 17-year-old Omar bin Amran disappeared almost 30 years ago from a neighborhood where he lived with his family, family in Algeria. Now, for my American friends, Algeria is a country in northern, northern Africa. It's kind of like right below Spain across the Mediterranean Sea. Now, at the time, there was a civil war going on, and many young men were disappearing in and around Algeria during this conflict. But still, the family held out hope and searched for Omar for years. The family's dog was especially upset and seemed to be searching their neighbor's property as if hoping to find Omar there. Then that dog turned up dead. Flash forward to last Sunday when police raided the neighbor's house and found Omar alive inside a cage used for sheep, according to the BBC. Omar is now 45 years old. This whole time he's been kept prisoner in the house next door to where his family lives. The house is owned by a 61-year-old man who has not yet been publicly identified that man would have been about 35 years old at the time of Omar's abduction. He worked as a civil servant and lived alone. Details are still kind of filtering in uh, via other sources through Algeria, but it seems that Omar's family was tipped off about the kidnapping when the kidnapper's brother posted on social media recently and said that there was a man being held captive at his brother's house. These brothers were apparently involved in a financial dispute, and this was the brother's way of getting back at him. Family members saw the post and thought, hey, maybe this, this could be Omar, and the police raided the place and found him. When he was rescued, Omar appeared to be in decent health. Police believed that the old man who took him in had tortured and threatened him to the point that the boy didn't feel safe trying to escape <clears throat> or call out to his family. Again, the, you know, this, oh, by the way, the dog. Uh, let me let me finish up that part of the story. Now we know that the dog was likely killed <clears throat> by this, this man who lived next door because the dog could smell Omar in the house, and that's why he was always at the neighbor's after Omar disappeared. Again, we never really know what our neighbors are up to, which is why I tell people to take the time to get to know your neighbors. If everybody took the time to make friends, and learn about the people who live to the right of them and to the left of them, things like this would be a lot less common. We need to not be, the, this sort of story shouldn't make us more isolated. It should make us want to reach out more and learn and, and befriend our, our neighbors. That's the only way to fix this thing, by the way. And let me get, get off my, uh, my soapbox now. Internet personality DJ Academics was sued for rape and defamation this week by a woman who claims he assaulted her, assaulted her at his home, according to Rolling Stone. This woman, Zia Abashe, had uh, dated the DJ, whose real name is Livingston Allen, after meeting him online in 2021. 
Uh, Zia alleges that on July 16, 2022, Allen invited her to his house in New Jersey after not having seen her for about a year. When she arrived, she was met not by Allen, but by two of his friends. And in the lawsuit, uh, uh, Abashe claims that these men gave her a drug drink and then raped her on Allen's pool deck. She says she woke around 4 a.m. that night to find Allen himself on top of her. Later, she traveled to a hospital for a rape kit, which allegedly found traces of Allen's sperm. But then she, uh, she then went to the police, where they photographed the bruises on her arm, back, buttocks, and legs. But then she decided to stay silent during the police investigation and decided to not press charges. She has now brought the civil suit lawsuit against Allen addressing this incident uh, because he took to social media and said some things about this whole situation um, late last year. So kind of he's the one that broke the silence. Now she's suing. Allen is calling the suit a shakedown, but we're going to hear more about this in the weeks to come. Um, so check it out. Keep that on your radar. And uh, after the break, I've got many cold case updates. There's a really cool uh, uh, Jane Doe that was identified in Florida. Uh, there's an update in the Dan Schneider Nickelodeon weirdness. All this and more. I'll be back in two and two. Please hang up and try again. And we're back with Concrete Cowboys starring Jerry Reed. Uh, some cold case updates for you. Creepy Hollywood producer Dan Schneider is back in the news this week after another young actress has accused him of inappropriate behavior, according to the New York Times. The latest allegations come from Lori Beth Denberg, best known for her role on the Nickelodeon sketch comedy show All That. She claims that Schneider played on her, uh, preyed on her as a teen, showing her pornography and initiating phone sex. Denberg began a consensual relationship with Schneider at the age of 19. He's 10 years older than her. Schneider's past has been in the news recently since the March release of the docuseries Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV. Denberg says she did not come forward earlier because for many years she didn't see their interactions as so inappropriate since she was older than 18, but now recognizes the power imbalance of it all, such as when he would show her porn in his office at work while having control of her show. One of the porn videos that he showed her allegedly uh, showed a woman performing oral sex on a donkey. Now, um, personally, I'm holding out hope that Amanda Bynes finally breaks her silence on the whole thing. Uh, if you don't know that connection, read up on it. Amanda Bynes, Dan Schneider, holy cow, what a rabbit hole to disappear into. Uh, but we're going to hear more about him in the weeks to come. U.S. Marshals and Missouri police found and arrested 72-year-old Herman Carroll on Saturday after the fugitive managed to elude capture for more than two decades, according to the Daily Beast. Carroll was accused of sexually assaulting a 12-year-old girl in 2000 in the state of Illinois. He posted bail and then vanished. Carroll also had prior convictions for sex offenses from 1983 and 1993, since then, marshals have tried desperately to locate him, searching in Texas, Alaska, Arkansas, and Maryland. Then last week, they received a tip that he was living in Branson, Missouri. And that's where they found him. Carroll's being held in the Taney County Jail, awaiting extradition to Illinois. Here's a, here's a weird one. An Alabama middle school principal was arrested this week and charged in the cold case death of three people who were murdered in Georgia in 2013, according to NBC News. And I thought my middle school principal was a prick. Uh, this guy. 45-year-old uh, Keontae Harris has been working as the assistant principal at Micadori Middle School in McCalla, Alabama. Three other people, by the way, were arrested as well. And they're saying these four people uh, killed the other three. Police investigating the 2013 triple murder say the victims were tortured and murdered in Clayton County, Georgia, and dumped in nearby Fulton County. It's a very strange case. Like, I, I can't think of anything quite like this. Like, what would lead these four people to murder the three others? There's a big story going on there. What was the impetus? Usually it's one of three things, right? Money, drugs, or women. I'm leaning towards drugs in this case, but we'll see. Uh, more info on that one to come. 
Police in Florida are one step closer to solving a cold case murder this week after finally identifying the victim, according to WFLA. In 1985, construction workers digging around on Crescent Beach in St. John's County found human remains in a shallow grave. The remains belonged to a woman between the ages of 30 and 50, and they determined that she'd been murdered. But until this year, police were unable to figure out who the victim even was. In 2023, they sent some of her remains to our friends over at Othram Labs, who did DNA testing and genetic genealogy, and determined that the remains were those of Mary Alice Poltz from Rockville, Maryland, who went missing in 1968. Poltz was last seen with her boyfriend, John Thomas Fugit, who died in prison in 1981 while awaiting execution for the murder of his roommate. Now, I'm no, I'm no rocket scientist, but... That guy seems like a really good suspect. So we'll see how that works out. Let's go over to weird news here. Legit weird news. Police in New York are searching for 50-year-old Clifton Williams, who is accused of punching actor Steve Buscemi in the face while, while he was walking along 3rd Street in Manhattan last week, according to the New York Daily News. Buscemi was rushed to Bellevue Hospital, and he was treated for bruising and swelling to his left eye, but he's recovering. There have been a recent spat of these random assaults in New York City this year. Uh, people are just randomly punching each other, but now they've picked on the wrong guy. Buscemi is a national hero, for God's sakes. Not only did he play the role of Danny McGrath in the award-winning film Billy Madison, but he also volunteered with the New York City Fire Department after the events of 9-11. Even Eddie Vedder of Pearl Jam is pissed. I, do they know each other? Are they friends? I don't know, but Eddie Vedder weighed in. During a concert in Sacramento this week, Vedder asked the crowd, who the fuck does that to Steve Buscemi? Adding, quote, hit me, don't hit him, end quote. Uh, we didn't need an excuse, Eddie Vedder. Uh, over to pop culture. This week, you gotta check out uh, it just premiered on Netflix, Ashley Madison, Sex, Lies, and Scandal. The, Ashley Madison, of course, is the internet website, a dating, alternative dating website, that, it, it, which their slogan is, Life is short, have an affair. Uh, now, here's the write-up on the docu-series, uh, or doc documentary. Uh, when a dating site for people seeking adventurous affairs is hacked, millions of users' intimate data is exposed, wrecking marriages and destroying lives. You might remember this from a few years ago where, you know, the, the Anonymous and these other online people were like, here's a list of people that signed up for Ashley Madison. And there were a lot of people on there. And like they said, destroyed some marriages, ruined some people's lives. Uh, also, Josh Duggar was on there, which is weird. Um, you know, Josh Duggar from the convicted Mormon uh, from Utah. Uh, the book of the week, the recommended true crime book of the week, is The Bomb Doctor, a scientist's story of bombers, beakers, and bloodhounds. Here it is. Uh, this actually comes out on Tuesday, so you're getting a sneak peek. It'll be in stores on Tuesday. You can order it online, pre-order it. Uh, it helps the, the rankings if you do so. Uh, this is written by Kirk Yeager and his sister, Celine. Here's the write-up. This is not CSI. What you encounter as a true bomb detective, or bomb doctor as some in the FBI call me, are fields of twisted metal containing covered fragments intermingled with human remains. You have carnage and chaos. As you wade into the sea of wailing sirens and screaming survivors awash with the stench of diesel fuel and decaying bodies, your job is to ferret out forensic clues in a type of macabre scavenger hunt to ultimately reconstruct the scene and the explosive device and determine what happened and what the bomb looked like before it was torn asunder. None of this happens overnight, nor does it happen in a time frame that can be neatly packaged in an hour-long TV show. Scavenger hunt can take months, or in the case of the infamous collar bomber, seven painstaking years. The work is worth every second and every hor horrific image that etches itself into your brain because it helps prevent new horrors. Not all, obviously. We are not superheroes, but unlike shooters who often just snap or seem to act out in random ways, bombers almost always have a story, one that follows an arc. 
In The Bomb Doctor, my goal is to explain that arc, explode myths, reconstruct reality, and build an understanding of the reason and means behind the mayhem, as well as pull back the curtain on the investigative process that brings bombers to justice. That's kind of a cool inside look. I can't think of another book quite like that. Uh, if you want to know everything about the people that reconstruct these, uh, these bombings, this is, this is the book for you. Um, different perspective. Check it out. The Bomb Doctor. And that's the show for this week, folks. Um, it is the weekend. Go have some fun. The weather is wonderful here in bucolic Akron, Ohio. Um, uh, I'll probably avoid it, though. You know, I'm, uh, I'm going to watch some TV, get caught up binging Yellow Jackets or something. Um, but do what you will. And in the meantime, in the words of the incomparable Murray Saul, the godfather of Cleveland Radio, we gotta, 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 Get down, damn it. True Crime This Week is a Fearful Symmetry production. Photo and artwork are licensed through Shutterstock. If you like the cut of my jib, I have another podcast you might enjoy called The Philosophy of Crime, in which I attempt to solve the big questions behind our true crime obsession by looking to philosophy for answers. Thank you for listening. I'll see you next week. Sit, Brownie, sit. Good dog.